Welcome back to the Rider's Wardrobe, everyone. This week, I've brought Sir Berberum back to the show after Jack rudely interrupted his last interview way back in episode 8. It's probably worth listening to that first if you have no idea what I'm on about. Sir Berberum, I can only apologise that it's taken me this long to get you back officially. Things have been rather chaotic here at the wardrobe. Quite all right. I can only hope that you got Jack on a leash. He's not on a leash, but he is working on a little task for me. I think provided nobody mentions that number, he shouldn't interrupt us. Who knew he was so superstitious? Anyway, let's get on with this interview, shall we? Might as well. If we let ourselves start, we may never stop berating Applejack. It's one of my favourite pastimes, honestly. Anyway, where were we? Sixteen nights left. Ah, yes, I remember. 984 men died for a prologue. Yes, I feel like I should clarify, but don't stress about it, Lou. I've had a few weeks to process, and I've reached a conclusion. I see you bristling up there, but there's no need to defend yourself. I trust you. Berberum, that is about the last thing I expected to come out of your mouth. Well, look at it this way. You're a storyteller, and well on your way to being a professional in the trade because people are actually paying you money for this shit. I'm not but a knight. I've no stake in tales or songs. If those men had to die, be it for prologue or backstory, I trust it serves a greater purpose than simple figures. I don't really know what to say to that. Thank you. Your listeners probably want to know exactly what I got up to during the final battle, and to tell you the truth, I turned out to be less than useless. I got in a few good swings, rammed my claymore into its foot a couple of times. Then the new boy, Casserot his name was, he was in episode 9 actually. Right, well, where I prefer the big two-handed sword, he was a sword and board type of fellow, which is why everyone was surprised to see him wielding a javelin. A javelin? I, you know, like a short spear, very lightweight, used for throwing. I know what a javelin is, I was wondering how he laid hands on one. Bugged if I know. Pulled it out of his arse for all I can gather. Anyway, the boy was a natural. Never seen a throw like it, never did again. Except immediately afterward when he threw a second one. Don't ask me where he got that one either. Must have been nestled between his buttocks like the first one. Spectacular imagery, thanks so much. Anyway, beautiful form, perfect curvature. Are we still talking about throwing the javelin? Of course we are, you numpty. Anyway, for all his flawless technique, he couldn't aim for shit. Missed the dragon by a dozen strides or so. The second shot, however, got the dragon right in the throat he did. Now there's been a bit of debate about what happened next. I'll be the first to tell you how proud I was of him. I patted him on the back and... Berberum. Mm. This is a safe place. You don't have to fib. I wouldn't do that. Fine. I screamed at the boy, only because I thought he'd doomed us all. When his spear struck home, the bloody dragon only turned its big head at us and roared. We only realised what had happened when it went to blow fire. Its entire throat exploded. Dragon blood and clout everywhere. I must admit, I felt a certain amount of shame for those events and what I may have said to him, particularly when I came to and everyone was praising Kassarot for saving the day. What do you mean when you came to? Well, after Kassarot threw the javelin and got the bloody thing's attention, it reared its ugly head at us, and I managed to get caught in the back of the noggin by its wing. It didn't hurt too much. It was mainly a elm shot. The real trouble was when I tried to get back to my feet and the ground gave way beneath me. Turns out I'd been standing on the lip of a riverbank, which decided to collapse. I hit my head on a stone on the way down. That's so dangerous. You could have drowned. I could have, I know. If it wasn't for Kassarot, he pulled me out of the water, dragged me to the shore. I don't know how long I was out, but he was still wringing wet when I came to, and clapped on the back by the last of us. Such fine form. Perfect curves. The javelin? The javelin, I of course. The throw, I mean. What else would I be talking about? That might be a question for your next appearance on the show. As for this week, we're about done. Thank you so much for appearing on the 13th episode of The Writer's Wardrobe. Did you just say... Oh, shit. Loomis, did you just speak the unlucky number? Cut the mic, cut the mic, cut the...